Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. So today's a very, very exciting day. I went to see the movie A Haunting in Venice in theaters. Uh, it's the first movie that I've seen in theaters so far this month, and I thought it was pretty good. So let's talk about it. Modded movie review. review. Alrighty, right off the bat, I want to go ahead and say that this is one of three movies that have came out in the last like five or six years. That is it based off of an Agatha Christie novel. This one's based off of one called, I believe, The Halloween Party. Um, I think that this movie is a whole lot of fun, and I think that they do a great job of making these adaptations. Um, this is the third one. The first two, I believe, one in 2017 was called The Myrtle on the Oriental Express, which I watched that one back when it came out. I really, really enjoyed it. I remember having a great time with it. And then there was one that I believe came out either last year or 2021 called The Death on the Nile. That one my opinion wasn't as good um in my opinion that one was also like one of the most predictable ones and i think that um a lot of the acting in that one was very stale but in this one we bring it back we have a new cast of characters and i think that all of the actors and actresses in this have a really great time i think that um kenan Bronneth, the guy who plays the main mustache twirling detective um i think that he does a really good job i think he really perfected his role in this and i think that uh, i really could not imagine anybody else playing this character um he's a whole lot of fun and he's very iconic in this performance um i think that he has this great little like snarky humor to him and despite being a very serious character somebody who's very like here's the job we got to get the job done and he's very when he starts detectiving he goes hard right uh but he still has a lot of that humor in there where he's like he's the smartest man in the room but also he's not afraid to like make witty comebacks and stuff like that there's a lot of humor in this movie that I really, really enjoyed. I think the death on the Nile could have benefited from there being a lot more emotions and stuff like that. There was not a lot going for it um, for the death of the Nile, but in this movie, they really play into everything that they have going for them. Um, I think that the fact that Venice is the main location of this movie and they really use that to their advantage as well. Um, this is a period piece. It takes place back in the 1940s, 1950s, somewhere in that area. Um, back before modern technology, really. Um, and I think that they do a really good job of kind of like building up a lot of like horror and suspense just by having like the streets of Venice, um, obviously Venice, it doesn't really have streets. They have canals that are filled with water or whatever. And there's a lot of moments where it starts flooding. There's a lot of moments where people are rowing in boats and it's very slow and eerie. And there's a lot of sequences showing one of the first Halloweens in Italy where kids are wearing a bunch of creepy masks, but then also the people who are adults in the story also wanted to kind of fit in and like match the theme so they're also wearing masks so it's just a bunch of people in masks rowing slowly down a, the stream and um it's a very stormy night so later on in the movie when it starts storming and the canals start getting flooded it really creates this new sense of terror as it feels like even the elements outside of the house are also out to get them which i think is a whole lot of fun um, something that I really like about this movie, I don't remember Tina Fey's character being in either the last one, too. I could be completely wrong, but um, I like that they bring in somebody who's kind of like a a Agatha Christie, in a sense, somebody who's like a novelist and somebody who is basically just there for the experience and she wants to be able to write about this movie, I mean, write about the experience that this detective is having because they're a writer who writes a lot of cool mystery stuff and they base it off of him. And I, I like that they have a joke in there where um, one of the characters who's a side character um, recognizes that the author and is like, oh my God, I love your books. They're so amazing. And then they ask the actual detective, you base your work off of her books, don't you? And it's like the other way around. And I don't know. That was just a funny little quirky joke that they had in there. Um, I think that uh, this movie did a great job doing exactly what a movie like this should do. Um, it's coming out around Halloween time, and I feel like that is definitely intentional. Um, the mystery aspect of this movie is huge, right? Obviously, somebody gets murdered, everybody tries to figure out what it is. That's pretty typical base level stuff, but they add in kind of a supernatural-esque feeling to it. There's a lot of moments where it feels like some things that happen in the movie are not possible at all. And I think that they do such a great job of like giving kind of that like thrill, thrill rush and there will be sequences where the main character, we're watching the detective go by, and it literally seems like whatever's going on right now isn't even possible. So it has to be something supernatural. And something that I like about this is throughout the story, there's a sequence where he gets drugged. And after that point forward for the next, like, I want to say 30, 45 minutes of the movie, a lot of things happen that really can't be explained by nature. And then it kind of gets explained after the fact that there was poison in the honey and um that's how he was able to crack the cases because he himself was poisoned um and 
I think it's really, really interesting. I, I like a lot of the stuff that they did with his movies. So um, something else that I want to kind of give him credit for and kind of address um, the supernatural side of things. So obviously um, the main character is someone who's very straightforward, doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in any afterworld or any souls or anything like that. Um, and obviously by the end of the movie, his mind has changed a little bit on that. But um, I like the fact that they touch on things that are like very accurate with supernatural like kind of beliefs that people have like uh, a little kid being somebody who would understand and be able to hear and see ghosts a lot that's accurate to a lot of lore about supernatural related things happening and especially in history there's a lot of stuff where it's like kids would be able to sense the undead if there's undead around them and stuff like that which i think was interesting i think the way that they did that in this movie was great um now to touch on some of the actors and actresses um they had michelle yo in this she was a blast for the whole like 10 minutes that she was in it um i i really enjoyed the stuff with her um tina fey i think was a great little fun side character i feel like she bounced off kenneth Branagh really well in this um there's this actress who i had never seen anything else before i don't know if she's young and upcoming or not um her name is emma laird i have to have it pulled up because i was not going to remember that name and i definitely didn't pronounce it right um but she's in this movie and she's a whole lot of fun she plays kind of like an immigrant who's trying to get by and um she's very smart and she's very like capable and independent and this like i said takes place in like the 1950s and stuff like that so her being like a very well-read character is great but she also has a lot of moments where she like portrays a lot of emotions and she's very like uh i, I don't know she, she's very feisty and i like her character in this i think that she does a great job and then there's sequences where like um she and her brother have been through a lot and they're trying to you know get free and go to america and stuff like that they've kind of just got caught in like a not great place and um i don't know i think that sh her acting in this was really stand out to me um and then another one i'm a huge fan of jamie dornan now i've now seen him in a couple of movies this year um and i've enjoyed him in every single one of them he was in a heart of stone um recently and i absolutely loved him in that and then in this i absolutely loved him um he has a moment where his character has a ptsd outbreak because he was a doctor during one of the world wars and he he sells it incredibly well like his emotions his entire change of personality when he gets his little ptsd flair is insanely well acted and i think that everything about his character in this movie is fantastic he really does a great job of diving into the characters that he's playing because like he's a very like noticeable actor he's been in a lot of things and if you see him you'll definitely recognize him but in this he feels just like this doctor who's been through so much and who is really like trying to take control of his life again after having so many problems he's been like discharged from the military he's seen so many people die he's had to do so many terrible things and um i think that his character in this is really well so i just wanted to highlight those actors real quick i think that that's a whole lot of fun um and then the last thing i wanted to touch on was the mystery itself uh one person gets murdered and then another person gets murdered in another room seemingly like it had to have been a ghost or something like that um i really enjoyed the mystery of this movie i feel like um there were definitely some sequences where you can tell kind of who it was and why they were doing it and um, that's obviously going to happen in any murder mystery movie because some of the fun is being able to guess who the the killer was. And uh, I was able to figure it out, I want to say within like 25 minutes into like after the first person's murdered. And I like the fact that he, the detective doesn't rule anything out. So he goes and he interviews a lot of other people as well. And um, I like that we learn a lot about their backstory through these little um, kind of conversations. And then something that's really nice about this is we see that he was wrong about something which i think is a whole lot of fun because like they do all the flashbacks and everything showing exactly what happened as well and then like the second he like figures out the case something happens and then everything gets thrown off and he was absolutely wrong about everything and i think that, that was a fun little twist to have in there but um that being said i think that's everything i had to say about this movie i think that it was fun i definitely don't think it's like Oh my god this is one of the best movies i've seen this year but i definitely think that it was a good time to go watch it um it's going to be definitely in that like middle of the road section for me if i was to rank this among every movie i've seen this year um so for me for my final score i'm going to give this movie a solid 78 out of 100 um i definitely think it was a whole lot of fun i think that the horror elements worked out really well in this um there was a lot of jump scares but you can tell it's not a horror movie because they don't know how to do jump scares every single jump scare was just here's this really loud noise it actually just hurts your ears it doesn't scare you at all 
Um, and that kind of sucked, but I think that the camera work and stuff definitely gave off horror vibes to me. Uh, but yeah, that was it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I love and appreciate you guys so much for coming by and checking this out. Hopefully you have a good day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow, bow, bow. He wanted me to come, but first I did this. We planned a day, and then we did this. Wanna be in love with the girls with the kisses. Don't give a damn, I'll rid this. I like this when I run the distance. I run a fine kid, you go for listings. I wanna live within the business. Buy more than what's on the clearances. You're getting big cause I know you're a physicist. I wanna deny this shit, I'm unlimited.